action. This is Jamie. I'm Gus. I'm Sarah. We're Caraco Benito. And this is Records in My Life on Northern Transmission. <laughs> Start each one of you with a record that you listened to with either your parents played for you or a sibling played for you. One of a childhood memory of a record that you really enjoyed. Um, I grew up in Japan until I was 13, and uh, I remember my parents, well, my dad playing um, Abbey Road by the Beatles, and um, I think I was about seven years old, and I was really obsessed with Octopus's Life because. Um, I, I didn't know who the Beatles were, and I kept, kept mm. on had this image of this octopus chilling out in this garden, mm. and okay. uh, that's still that's still in my mind. I remember that moment. One formative record for me was my dad's pause button cassette mix of electro tracks he made in the mid or early '80s with his friend, as the Clive Road movement, which was the street they lived on, and it was stuff like Man Parish and. Uh, you know, Sucker MCs by Run DMC, you know, real classic 808 Lindrum electro stuff. And there's, you know, he was, he was, there's some really fun stuff on there. Like, there's the bit in um, Don't Blame it on the Sunshine, Blame it on the Boogie by Michael Jackson. And it goes like, he's, he's, he, he used to regale me with this tale of how he spent hours matching it up to the drum fill from this electro record, which I can't remember which one it is. And it was like, sunshine, moonlight, boogie. So in a way, that was my first production lesson from my dad. Cool. So give us each um, first album. It can be an album or cassette or CD. Do you remember buying if you would nick some money from your mom's first? first one? Maybe. Yeah, first yeah, purchase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first CD I ever bought was uh, Ali G and Shaggy, Majuli. Mm. That's a good one. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, my, my, and my parents bought it for me from Tesco's. They didn't know what it was. <laughs> and like, yeah, like they, they, we played that in the car and um, it got turned off. <laughs> <laughs> I won't quote any lyrics or anything, but I love Ali G and I love Shaggy. <laughs> um, and it was released on like an amazing like Jamaican record label, which like all the other music is amazing. And then there's just this like Majuli on there. Um, but yeah, formative stuff. <laughs> I didn't know that story. That's a good yeah. story. That's yeah. cool. What was your first album? My first album, again, my dad influencing me a bit here. He he reckoned that I'd like Jimi Hendrix, so he bought me. <laughs> The Jimi Hendrix Experience, The Greatest Hits, you know, the one with, you know, basically just the sort of first album era stuff on it. And, you know, I was really listening to Hendrix the other day and it's pretty wild stuff, man. It's, uh, I'd, I wouldn't classify myself as a rocker, but, you know, you've got to dig, you've got to dig fire. And, uh, you know, those drum fills in Manic Depression, that's, that's some good content. So give us a record now that the three of you guys, I don't know if you meant like school or after, but what you kind of like when you decide you want to play music together, a record or two that really inspired you to do the music that you do. I think how Callie's yeah, a good one. Yeah. Um, um, this is like, Sarah's in on this as well, but special, but me and Gus, like we had a lot of chat. We had, we were like, again, Gus's dad, big up. She like was just made this like CD for us full of dance hall. Yeah. And um, but like raw, there's dance a theme like here. Early raw dancehall, yeah. and Tiger, you're dead now, is like the one where we listen to that and we're like, okay, how are they making that? You know, like mm. what, what what's happened? This is a raw raw power dance record, and actually, what's so cool is that, you know, I, I was we were aware of that track for a while, and I was playing on my Yamaha PSS 780, uh, which is the the kind of big one that's sort of shaped like a ziggurat and it has an FM synthesizer in it. And I was just playing around on the presets 
And then I hit this bell sound and I'm like, wait a second. And then I played the octave and I was like, oh God. And I put on your dead now and it was the same. The din, 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 din. And that was crazy because we were using the same crappy synths that they were using on these really hot, aggressive dance hall records. But I always thought the sounds were kind of kitsch and cute. And it was really funny when we realized we, we had been using the same sounds all along. How Cali Bacon? Well, How, How Cali Bacon is um, a record that I'd been into for a while. And then when we met Sarah, we sort of suggested, well, why don't you try rapping? You know, that could sound really cool. And actually, Sarah never rapped at that point. And the record that we said, well, you know, here is a cool Japanese rap record. Maybe you could, you, could, you know, do it a bit like this was how Cali Bacon and I mean it's it's actually a crazily consistent album from when J-pop was peaking just because the sort of CD economy had just boomed in the late 90s and it's so consistent I'll play I'll play you know a good five different tracks from it maybe in DJ sets and whichever track I play I always get asked what is this even though it's these two Japanese girls rapping over like sort of Homo Shibuya K funk break beats. It always gets a, 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 a you know a question about it. Okay, this is the last one. It can be a, a new feeling, artist. It can be someone you just discovered, or an okay. old old artist. Somebody that There's we should all be yeah, school yeah, yeah, us. Yeah, what should we listen to? It's so easy. I think I have an obsession with this Brooklyn rapper called Young Ma. Um, she's also badass, <laughs> and uh, yes, I I'm scared to talk to her, but one day. I would love to do a track with her. So if you're listening, young Ma, I'm here. So jump, jump, trampoline, fly to Benito, Benito Generation. Generation.